Once saved, always saved. There's no one who's on fire for Christ that's preaching once saved, always saved. I'm going to let you know this right now. Not one person who preaches once saved, always saved is on fire for Christ, okay? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Once saved, always saved. Okay, this is the dangers of believing in that deception, okay? Number one thing about once saved, always saved is that it pretty much lets you know that there's no sin. There's no judgment for your sins. And, you know, what's the point? You know, if you, have, if you believe once saved, always saved, then, you know, what's sin? It doesn't matter. You can live however you want because you're saved. And that's a strong deception in Christianity because Jesus himself says that he who endures to the end, the same shall be saved. So as the, as they are making this video, no one is saved. No one is saved. No one is saved. No one is saved. He who endears to the end. So you got to go through the trials and tribulations. The word of God says in Mark chapter 13, verse 13, and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. This passage is often misunderstood and misused to assert that an individual's salvation from hell is dependent upon their perseverance in the faith demonstrated by their good works and ongoing obedience. However, it becomes abundantly clear contextually when we examine this passage as a whole that it's dealing with a physical deliverance from death rather than a spiritual salvation from hell. I'll say that again. This passage is dealing with a physical deliverance from death rather than a spiritual salvation from hell. Look at verse 12. Now the brother shall betray the brother to what? Death, physical death, and the father, the son, and children shall rise up against their parents and what? Shall cause them to be put to death. Again, physical death. To further substantiate this interpretation, look at verse 20. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. Don't miss that. No what? Flesh should be saved. Again, a physical deliverance from death, not a spiritual salvation from hell. Let's keep reading. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. The believer that physically endures the tribulation of this time will be saved or delivered by means of the rapture. Look at verse 24. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then after that tribulation, shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory, and then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. The believer that survives the tribulation, enduring unto the end, shall be saved via the rapture. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes in the clouds, and gathers together his elect. First Thessalonians chapter 4, starting off in verse 16, the Bible says, For the Lord himself shall what? Descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Notice this. Then we, which are alive and remain, referring to who? those that have endured unto the end of the tribulation, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord.